Coming up next on Hands on Windows, we're gonna take a look at the top five apps that come with Windows 11 that you might want to uninstall, ignore, or just replace. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Hands on Windows. I'm Paul Throt. And this week, we're going to take a look at the top five apps that come with Windows 11 that you might consider replacing or uninstalling or at least ignoring. Um, some of them are more terrible than others. Um, I, like everyone else, I have my own uh, particular way of doing things, and I like certain apps that. Uh, don't come with windows that i prefer to use instead of the ones that do come with windows etc um, it is worth noting that some of the apps that come with windows 11 are excellent i've talked about clipchamp at length and i use that not quite every day but almost every day when i create videos for throt.com or my eternal spring channel on youtube but i also use paint and notepad every single day and those apps are actually terrific and despite the fact that they're both you know, closing in on <laughs> 40 years old. Um, they've been updated in recent years for Windows 11 and they're they're quite good. So it's not all bad. I, I don't want to pre present it that way, but there are definitely some stinkers out there and, um, and then some that are just less than op optimal and you might want to take a look at those. So the first one, of course, has to be Microsoft Edge. I know this is controversial in some circles, um, but Microsoft Edge is kind of a, a gateway drug to Microsoft's broader ecosystem of online services and advertising. Um, it's overloaded with superfluous extra features. Um, I do what I can to kind of minimize uh, its impact on the system when I do use it, um, but I don't use it for the most part, right? So um, I happen to use Brave, which I recommend because it's secure and private. Um, and I happen to like its minimalist UI, et cetera, but Chrome, Firefox, Opera, Vivaldi, name your choice. Um, as long as you're installing the right uh, extensions and so forth, uh, they're all good. There are some outliers coming up like DuckDuckGo and Arc, which are very interesting, and we might look at those in the future as well. Um, but if you're, <laughs> uh, if you're a fan of Edge, um, I apologize. I mean, obviously, you're free to use Edge. It is easy enough to, uh, you know, replace the browser. You can go into uh, the settings interface here and go to apps and default apps. And it's horrible how this works, but you can just pick your browser and um, look at this lovely little notification um, and just change your default browser. You could do this, right? Um, don't forget, if you do do that, to prevent Edge from auto starting every time the computer boots and you sign in, right? Because there is a process here. If we sort these correctly, oh, I've already done it here. So I actually turned it off. So, uh, but Edge typically is running on boot. You can disable it through Task Manager or actually through the Settings app as well. Um, but the big, if you aren't going to use Edge, you know, the big joke, of course, is that people run this app one time and they do it so they can install a favorite browser. And that's funny and it's probably true as well. But uh, you might appreciate the fact that you don't even have to do that. You can just use Winget to install your favorite browser. So I've already, I already know what the exact line is to type here. But if I wanted to avoid Edge entirely, I could just type this. Now, I already have Brave installed on this computer, so it will fail out because it's already there. But that will do it. And you could do that for Firefox or Chrome or whatever else. So um, simple to avoid in some ways, although there are additional problems with Edge in that it runs when you click on a story in widgets, um, when you click on a story in search highlights, when you click on Copilot, <laughs> these are all things that run Edge. And in a future video, we'll, we'll look at a workaround for that. But for now, for the most part, um, not too onerous to avoid Edge most of the time. Um, the second one that I have, this is a, a new thing for me, but I've started avoiding OneDrive, which I, I've always loved the service and it works well. Um, and they have great integration in Windows with the file system and so forth. But because of the Copilot stuff that's happening now in Windows, they're really pushing features to get your data into the cloud so they can use it to train their AI. 
and they're forcing folder backup on us. Now, if you do use folder backup, and this is where by default, the desktop documents and pictures folders will be synced with OneDrive so that you get the same data on every computer and device that you use, um, then don't worry about it. <laughs> Everything's going to be fine. But if you don't want to use folder, uh, folder backup, you will be accosted constantly to turn it on. And if you keep ignoring it or saying no, it will actually just enable it in the background in many cases. That has happened to me now dozens of times. So my solution to this problem was to install Google Drive. I got a Google One two terabyte subscription. It's $99 per year. And it syncs uh, to the system locally, just like OneDrive does. These files are all in OneDrive. I'm sorry, or Google Drive. So I can have the same shortcuts over here in File Explorer. I have the same access to all of my files and so forth. So it's really, really nice. Um, and it doesn't ever harass me. So if this is a problem for you, like it is for me, um, that's a potential solution. Dropbox, obviously, there are other services, but uh, the Google route has worked well for me in this case. Um, one of the other big issues, uh, this is a long time issue, has been the Mail app in particular, and now it's turning into the new Outlook app, which is enraging a whole new generation of people. Um, the new version of Outlook is actually a, a pretty decent app. It um, integrates uh, mail calendar and contacts management into one app, like the corporate version of Outlook. It looks and works a little bit like the Outlook.com that you probably know from the web. Um, but man, people hate this app. And it, it, it's interesting because if you pay for Microsoft 365 or if you pay for something called ad-free Outlook, this is a beautiful app. But if you don't, there's this insidious kind of advertising happening here. Now, looking at this screen, you wouldn't even see it. Uh, but this story, this, um, this email message is not an email message, it's an ad. So when I click here, it opens the email like you would expect. If I click here, it opens that email. But if I click there, it launches Microsoft Edge and it goes to whatever this is an ad for. And I, this is not great. <laughs> I, I don't mind that there are ads in a sense. I, I get that you can pay to get rid of them, but the way that they put them in line here is a little sneaky and I could see why you might want to get rid of this. Um, you can uninstall this app. You can uninstall mail and calendar if you don't like those apps. Um, those apps are going away to be replaced by this app, obviously. Um, Third-party email apps are kind of tough. Uh, I actually use webmail. I use Gmail on the web, and I, I consolidated everything through a single account. So I, I wouldn't normally run a third-party app of any kind, um, and there aren't really many great ones on Windows. Um, you have to pay for it, but ProtonMail is actually very good, and private, secure, et cetera. Um, and they have a, a native app on Windows. So that's one option, I guess, but there isn't really much there, unfortunately, as far as workarounds go. Um, Microsoft has been integrating a consumer version of Microsoft Teams that nobody wants or uses uh, since the beginning of Windows 11, about two and a half, three years ago. And it's, yeah, it's giving me this non-standard interface for some reason. Typically, the way this comes up is with this little mini interface. Um, as you can see, there's no one here, <laughs> so I can talk with myself. Um, because I connected these two accounts, but I don't know anybody that uses this app. I don't think anybody knows anyone. You think even people at Microsoft don't know people who use this app. It doesn't link in with the normal version of Microsoft Teams, the, the work version, right? And um, that's going to change sometime uh, probably later this year. There will be a single Teams app that will work for everybody. But in the meantime, you're going to want to avoid this thing. Um, this is a little tricky. So um, actually, close that time is good. It doesn't always close. Um, you want to come down here and quit out of it. But the problem is once you have run it once, like I just did, it will configure itself to auto start. <clears throat> and oh, actually, it didn't do it this time. It did it before, but typically does. You can come in here and disable that better. I mean, honestly, just get rid of it. it there's no reason to have that thing here. It's This is not a, it's not a good app. They'll fix it in the future, but for now, um, everyone else is using... The real teams, Slack, Zoom, WhatsApp, Google Chat, probably Skype, whatever. They're all better, uh, and they have actual people using them. Um, there's an app called Beeper uh, coming that's uh, available for free that consolidates those all into one app, and they have a native Windows app, so that might be something to try as well. Um, the final app is uh, not offensive in any way, shape, or form, but I work with images all the time. And the Paint app that's built into Windows, let's see, I could just bring up a 
a picture like this. Um, I use a different app, but uh, the, the Photos app that comes in Windows is pretty good, right? It comes up as kind of a viewer by default. There's an edit button and it turns into an edit experience, which is almost like a different app in the same app frame. And they're starting to add some AI capabilities. We've looked at this stuff in the past. It's not bad. But because of all of the image work that I do with photos and other kinds of images, I use different apps for these purposes that are just better for my needs or more powerful. So for example, when I double click on this, it will open in something called image glass. And uh, this thing, you wouldn't know that there's an app running because it has this beautiful kind of minimalist UI that I have configured. It's full screen. And I can kind of tab here through whatever photos or images are in that folder, which is neat. And when I hit escape, it disappears. So I love that kind of a thing. And then when it comes to editing, um, I have a bunch of things to install, but I've been using Affinity Photo 2, which is a paid app, but low cost, much less expensive than Photoshop, but similarly powerful, available from the store. Kind of a great choice. Uh, Adobe Photoshop Elements is also great, also in the store. Um, so these are, you know, these are apps I use uh, that are just better than what's available in Windows. And then beyond that, there's a, there's a whole list of other things. I use uh, strange apps in some cases for writing. Uh, as a professional writer, I actually don't use Microsoft Word anymore. That's not part of Windows. So that's why that wasn't really on the list. Uh, but I have different apps for different things like everybody does. And uh, if there's a call for it, I might in the future maybe run down some of those other apps. Um, Although these, these to me are the big ones. If you, when you bring up a new install of Windows 11, um, these are the things you kind of want to get rid of in the beginning, or at least do what you can to, to minimize uh, their appearances on your system. So I hope you found this uh, helpful and useful. If you're an edge user, I hope you didn't find it offensive. I apologize. Um, we will be back each Thursday with a new episode of Hands-On Windows. Uh, thank you so much to everybody for your support, especially members of Club Twit. And you can find out more at twit.tv slash H-O-W. Thank you. See you next week.